welcome back to Beautiful People. We are Gemma and Campbell and this week we are exploring the incredible city of Bangkok. We are going to be taking you on a tour of all of the best sites that you need to see. And of course tell you guys all of the best ways for you to get around the city of Bangkok. And we are going to try and do all of this on a budget of just £20 a day. Is it possible? Wish us luck. This place is absolutely chaotic. After waving goodbye to the jungle paradise of Bali, we dived headfirst into the chaos of Southeast Asia, taking on Thailand's capital city of Bangkok. Stunning temples, bustling markets, delicious food, and a fascinating culture, all perfectly seasoned with a dash of absolute madness, this city is one of the most incredible places that we have ever been. This week, we test out our abilities at budget backpacking to see just how affordable Bangkok is in 2023, exploring the local sites, tasting the food, and sleeping in style all on a budget of less than 20 pounds a day if you're new around here and want to see more of our round the world adventures then hit that subscribe button and join the gang but for now let's get stuck into our budget day out in bangkok at one of the city's most beautiful sunrise locations good morning everybody and welcome to another beautiful day here in the bustling city of Bangkok. We've decided to actually start the day off at this stunning temple. It's not actually that far from the place we're staying tonight and it is this like golden monument that sits at the top of a hill. It's actually called the Golden Mount and it is just absolutely spectacular here. It's so quiet as well. We feel like the only tourists here so far is because it's literally just opened. We got here for half past seven just in time for them to open up the ticket office and we're going to go up the top and check out and see what the view of Bangkok is like at this time in the morning. So one of the reasons that we decided to visit the temple so early in the morning is because you need to cover your shoulders and your knees and honestly it is already so so hot here. I can't even imagine what this would be like at midday. Yeah I have had to wear a t-shirt instead of my vest and also the first time since we actually left London and we're in trousers. I am melting. I'm going to be getting up to the top of this mountain and I'm going to be a completely different person. So much hotter th here than we thought it was when we were in Indonesia. Wow, this is absolutely beautiful. We've come up to the top of the Golden Mount now where we can see the views across Bangkok. There's like a massive golden bell right in the centre of this building and it is absolutely beautiful. I always just think coming to temples like this are such a nice way to start the day because yeah. you get to see all the locals of Bangkok coming up and paying their respects and doing their prayers and everything and it is just so so peaceful up here. All you can hear is like the, the enchantments coming through the uh, microphones and there's like wind chimes all around the bottom of the temple that just sway in the breeze that's starting to blow across the city and it's just like such a lovely way to start the day. I've got to say, out of all the sites around here, I think this right here is my favourite one. <laughs> Number one tourist attraction in Bangkok. I'm a big fan. <laughs> but um. So we're just walking along trying to find somewhere for breakfast and there was this like little local restaurant that was absolutely bursting with people, like with queues down the streets. And we're like, what is this place? Like there must be something going on. Then we remembered we had a look at some vlogs the other day when we were doing some research for Bangkok and we heard there was a Michelin star restaurant here which is really, really popular and usually has crowds of people outside. And this is exactly what that is. It is so busy, I can't believe it. Honestly, it's about eight o'clock in the morning and this place is bursting with people. I did read, however, that dishes there can set you back up to about a hundred US dollars because it is so popular and because it is Michelin star, which I guess is a little bit out of our budget for today. Uh, Alright, so we've got a little orange just to keep us going. It turns out that mango sticky rice isn't sold as a breakfast thing typically, so we're on the hunt for something different. Yeah, we have found a different breakfast place on Google, which is about a 10 minute walk away, but it is so hot today already, so we needed to get something cold just to try and keep us going. This costs 20 baht for two orange juices, which is about 50 pence. That is so fresh. I'm gonna just squeeze an orange right into that. It's so good. Alright, so what about these then? What's that? It's, well, I could be butchering the pronunciation, Kanom Tan, which is a Thai toddy palm cake, and it is a popular Thai dessert consisting of small steamed cakes flavoured with toddy palm sugar and coconut milk wrapped in banana leaves and topped with grated coconut. So, no rice for breakfast for us, dessert instead. And what is Google Translate telling us this is? New type of candy, the first and only one in the world. 100% authentic, delicious, must try. Must try. I'll order 10. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth, how are they? Hot, really hard. 
All right, just bear with us here, lads. Wait, let me try another one. That one's insanely difficult to pull a bit off. Mmm, it's got like an after sweetness. Like it's not sweet when you first taste it. But then the more that you chew it, the sweetness and the sugar comes out. Really soft and fluffy, but really chewy. Mmm, I like these. All right, let me try a bit. <laughs> It really grows on you. Very here. good, very good. Mm -hmm. So we ordered a box which comes with 10 and we decided to share them. It costs 40 baht, so that's like one pound for the two of us for breakfast. In fact, we actually enjoyed them so much, we're going to go back and get a second portion. Why is it taking so long? This is far from my, oh, oh, hallelujah. I thought I'd swallowed my card. <laughs> that is ridiculous. It was one to charge us 220 baht just to withdraw some money, no matter what kind of currency you're withdrawing or however much you want to withdraw. 220 baht, which is about six pounds just to withdraw some money. Now I have read online that the easiest and the cheapest way to get around the city is actually to use public transport. The buses take a little bit longer than the trains, but they are like super affordable. I'm not entirely sure where we get the tickets. I think I read online that you actually buy them on the bus. We're gonna go and try and catch a bus now to our next destination, and yeah, we'll see if we can get a ticket while we're there. So you buy your ticket when you get onto the bus, and there's three levels of bus that we've read about online. There's the very basic bus, there's a bus with a fan, and there's also a bus with air conditioning, which is the bus we're on. This is the most luxurious bus. It costs 13 baht per person per ticket, and we're going on about a 25 minute journey, so that's not too bad. I feel like this area is just absolutely beautiful. There's, we're just like surrounded by temples and the architecture is just incredible. Now I've got to say, when it comes to finding vegetarian food, I've actually found it pretty easy here in Bangkok, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. We have found a place, thanks to our friend Feely and Keely. They visited it in their YouTube video when they came to Bangkok. And apparently it does a very, very good vegetarian pad thai. So we're going to go and try and find that now. This looks delicious. We've both gone for the vegetarian pad thai. It comes with some peanuts, a little bit of lime, and it's actually really easy to get to. It's close to some of the main tourist attractions in Bangkok, and it's a really small, homely, intimate little restaurant. This costs about two pounds, so I am excited to try it. Mm. But I think pad thai is up there with one of those meals I would have if you had one meal to choose before you died. It's just so, so good. That is so good. So one thing that I just love about since we've actually come back to Asia is just seeing how much of a sweet tooth people have over here. I thought in the UK and in Europe we liked sweets with everything, but they actually just brought this over to the table to go alongside the pad thai. Chili, vinegar and sugar. I don't think they've gone some sugar with the pad thai. I know there's possibly already sugar in it, but no more. Funny story, now if you watched our video on the Komodo Islands, you might remember that we had our shoes eaten overnight. We actually left them outside of the room at our guest house, woke up around 2 in the morning to what sounded like dogs fighting. Then we woke up in the morning to go and get our shoes and found them tossed around in the bushes, soaking wet and chewed up. Oh man, your shoes have been well tossed. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? That's what happens when you leave your shoes outside. That was really funny. We had to lighten up our suitcase a little bit and get rid of them, but now we're going to make it a little bit heavier again and go and try and find some new shoes. Okay, we're trying to find a ferry to get across the river because apparently it's like really cheap and easy to get ferries just scooting around the centre of Bangkok. But I seem to have come down this tiny little alley I've got no idea where it's leading to. Yeah, Google Maps took us to the wrong ferry terminal. I don't think this is the right bit either, babe. Me neither. This is impossible. <laughs> where are we going? I don't know. Everyone seems to want us to go on a one hour boat trip, but we don't want that. We just want a ferry. I think we're going to need to walk it. Right, we literally just need to get to that side of the river and it is just not as easy I thought it, as I thought it was going to be. Oh, thank God we found it. We're not completely useless after all, as much as I feel like that right now. So that cost 4 baht 50 per person, which is like 10p to ride the ferry. And uh, we actually were just chatting to a woman about doing a boat trip, which was like an hour. They were trying to charge us, what was it, 1,600 baht per person, which blows my mouth. I hope this is the right one. Don't put your bag down on the floor. Just in case. I think this is like the cheapest type of boat you can get. I've read you can get tourist boats, which are like air conditioned, plush seats and stuff, and then you get the local boats. And um, I guess this is why it only costs 4 baht 50 because like it is as basic as you can get literally. 
There's not even any sides to it. If I wanted to go swimming right now, I definitely could just jump into the water. I do not think I want to go swimming in there though. Nah, you really would not want to. It looks pretty big in This is more chaotic than the roads. These tourist boats are like flying down and just creating like tidal waves. We were trying to cross them getting broadsided. And literally 30 seconds later, here we are. And you want to know a funny story? Is that we started looking for this ferry about two and a bit hours ago, didn't we? Right. We're here, that's the main thing. Time to go and find me some shoes. Those ones. Cute. And that's your shorts. We've come to the Wanglang Markets, which sits right on the river. And I've got to say, there's pretty good vibes already here. I think since we actually got into the markets, I've seen maybe three other tourists here. And it is literally nothing but locals and school kids. So hopefully that means that it's not a tourist trap. And hopefully we should find some really good cheap stuff here. Isn't that a Harry Styles song? Brown sugar dirty milk. Brown sugar I mean, I don't dirty really know. <laughs> Brown sugar dirty milk. Love it. I don't really know Harry Styles songs, but I definitely don't think that's the words. No, I swear that was the words. It kind of just looks like a frappuccino, to be honest. To be honest. It just tastes like a frappuccino. There you go. Brown sugar dirty milk. So it's like a little bit sweet, but mainly just milky. And then it's got like a kind of dark caramelization to it. But it's like ice cold and it's like very, very refreshing. 29 baht. Can I argue with that, man? Got to say, I'm really not having much luck in terms of actually finding any sandals. There seems to be such a wide variety of stalls here, from like food to clothing, but there's literally no sandals anywhere. Oh, that's weird. Sorted! I mean, now I remember why the last time we were in Thailand, we came home with just so much stuff. Like, we filled our suitcases with stuff that we bought from the markets. Now I remember why. It is so cheap. Thailand is the place to come if you want to do some shopping. Cheese. We found them. Do you see any you like? There's some good birthday stocks. Knock off stocks. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Your Majesty. Are you funny? Only the authentic <laughs> stuff for me. <laughs> Success. There we go. £4.50 for a pair of Birkenstocks. Not too bad. Oh, what what happened to knock off Birks? These will do me until they break. <laughs> okay. RIP to the Burks, but these will have to do just now. <laughs> Little miss, I'm too good for <laughs> oh, no. I just love my Birkenstock so much. If you're a Birkenstock owner, I'm sure you can relate. The rain has just started, as you can see, so I think it's perfect time for us to head back to our hostel and give you guys a tour of where we're going to be spending the night. Welcome to our house. Now, we decided to go for something a little bit unique whilst we were here in Bangkok, and it's going to be our first time staying in a capsule hostel. First impressions of the hostel, it is on the top floor, basically. We got the lift majority of the way up, but then we had to lug our suitcases up two more sets, hence why I'm absolutely dripping in sweat right now. But how cute is this? I know, look at this. <laughs> this is how Gemma gets in the door. I don't even know if we're going to be able to fit our suitcases in there. Just. And we're in bunks for the night. <laughs> this is just surreal. Oh, rock solid. So as you can see, this room is absolutely tiny. We've got two bunk beds. There's like a little mirror getting ready area over here. And so over here we have a little wardrobe area. There's a little light, a little plug and some space for our bags. I think my backpacker days are gone though because I have a lot more clothes than just two hangers worth. I don't think I'll be using that, I think I'll be living out my suitcase. Up on the top bunk there's also a little spotlight that we can use and one plug. Luckily we actually packed multi points so we can charge as many gadgets as we can and I've got a pillow and a towel as well. I think we'll be quite cosy in here. Very cosy. I've Very got cozy. sweat dripping off my face right now. Let's get that air conditioning on. So you taking top bunk? I think so. We rock, paper, scissors for top bunk. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> what do you want? Do you have a preference? I'm quite happy on the bottom. Alright. I won't roll it inside. Top bunk for me then it is. I was just about to say it's actually quite good because we've got a key where we can lock our room, which we prefer in terms of security. However, the key doesn't seem to work, so yeah, that's not good. So there are a lot of these little capsule rooms in here, and I'm guessing some of these are dorms as well. 
And here we have the communal area and a bathroom. That is what we need. Washing machine. That's good. That is really good. And here there is a communal area with some books, a nice area to chill out, a fridge and some fresh water. And it looks like through there we've also got a bathroom area with a number of showers, toilets and sinks. This hostel is actually really central. It's called Victory View because it's close to Victory Viewpoint. So it's really easy to get around from this point in Bangkok. And so for a night stay in here for the two of us, it cost us £16. <laughs> Well, it's definitely been a little while since the last time I slept in a bunk bed. Now, a little bit of handy information for you. If you are actually travelling as two people, these kind of rooms tend to actually be cheaper than booking two beds in a dormitory. And that happens just because a private room works out maybe as about £16, whereas two beds work out as about £10 each. That is the main reason why we actually booked a private room, and it's the reason why we tended to book private rooms when we were back doing our backpacking days as well. As well as, I guess, we just prefer actually having our own privacy, especially when we're travelling with so much technology just because of it was a bit of peace of mind. Thank you. Yeah, looking dapper. Well, as you guys know, no trip to Thailand is complete without going to the infamous Koh San Road. So that's where we're going to go and check out now, see what deals we can get, go and check out the nightlife. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to test out my new fake Birkenstocks. I'll let you know at the end of the night whether my feet have actually survived. Okay, this is the Koh San Road that I remember. This place is absolutely chaotic. Oh, I am far too old for all of that. We'll see you guys in the morning. That is absolutely the last thing I was expecting to see in here. I know, same. I was like, what is that? It is a turtle. Chilling Fair out. Enough. Chilling out. He's not even gone down. He's just been hanging with his head above the top here. Keeps looking at us. That is just the funniest thing about travelling. In the UK, we've got ducks in the park. In Dublin, apparently, they had seagulls everywhere. And in Bangkok, they've got turtles. Who knew? So we are starting the day off at Lumfini Park, which is a massive big bit of green space in the middle of Bangkok. And it's a really pleasant place to come and actually have a walk around instead of like being in amongst the hustle and bustle on the pavements in the city. We've got a nice lake here in the middle with some turtles. People are running around the park and there's just lots of green plants and birds flying around. And it's just a really nice vibe in here. Well, again, that is absolutely not something I was expecting to see. Me neither. I have to say, I was actually just writing a vlog on the Komodo Islands and about the Komodo dragon. So when I saw that, I have to say I got a bit of a fright. <laughs> I just was not expecting to see that. And I absolutely just love the fact that you've got all these people sitting having picnics. There's kids kicking about in giant swan boats. And then there's a random giant lizard eating a fish that is obviously just hunted. Like, what? Well, I have got to say, I have absolutely loved my time back in Bangkok. It's been so much fun just actually experiencing it again for what feels like the first time. And yeah, I've just loved it. Yeah, me too. And it's so weird because the last time we were here, we didn't use Google Maps. Grab wasn't a thing. And it's just, it, it's almost like being here again for the first time, isn't it? But yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing to be back in Asia again. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it has been insightful. The big question was, did we manage to stick to our 20 pound a day budget? <laughs> No, no we didn't, I don't think so. I think we spent about £28 each in total. Okay, so £8 yeah. over. I had fun. Me too. And it was brilliant and I hope and you enjoyed it. And that's a bargain! Yeah, if you did enjoy it guys and you want to see more of our Asia content, if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button, give it a big thumbs up, let us know that we're doing the right thing and you want to see more videos just like this one. And as always, we'll see you again in the next one. See ya!